Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. In my recent video when I talked about this old Boy Scout pack, I mentioned this blanket. And several people, apparently, apparently it's a desirable blanket for reenactors who do uh, Australian and New Zealand troops of World War II, would like a better look at the blanket. So, I'm going to put that at the beginning of this. I'm going to talk about another piece of vintage kit in just a minute, but for right now, let me show you this blanket. Now I picked this blanket up surplus, oh, probably five years ago. It was just a simple wooden uh, wool blanket, about the same weight and size as the U.S. Army, except it was gray and had red trim on it. I thought it'd be a, a good woods blanket. And as typical of my stuff, I keep finding woods blankets and then it turns out that they're something special. So, the blanket. Well, you can see the date real clear. V98 made in Australia, 1943. Got a red line running, a light gray stripe, three light gray stripes, and two dark red lines on the field of the gray. Okay. Now, hope that answers your question. Yes. The piece of vintage kit I want to talk about. Kind of goes along with this idea. World War II. You see, World War II and before it, the U.S. Army sleeping bag was a wool bag. Now what I mean by that was it was about the same weight and thickness as a standard blanket simply sewed into what we think of as a mummy bag configuration with a zipper. They weren't very good by our standards, but that's because of the way we're using them versus how they used them. They issued heavy thermal long underwear. They issued wool shirts, wool pants, a big huge wool great coat that was basically a capote and was double or triple the thickness of a standard blanket. And so what those sleeping bags were actually used for was just simply an outer layer over all of this. They should be wearing proper clothing for the environment that would sustain them and this was just simply an extra layer. Quite often, and I've known quite a few Vietnam, oh, excuse me, World War II veterans that talked about they would share a foxhole and get back to back with a buddy and then they'd throw a poncho or a shelter half over them to trap heat. And you're only going to get four or five hours of sleep before you got to get up and it's your turn to do whatever chore. So rarely did they get to sleep very long. And the sleeping bag was just the outer cover. Most of them talked about how they just pull it up over their legs, take their boots off, put on dry socks and work it up over their legs and just wrap up with their great coat next to their buddy. And that was how they stayed warm. After the war, that's when this came in. Now, this is a... 1949 mountain bag. It's a down sleeping bag. Now, when I began doing my bushcraft, woodscraft type stuff in the early 70s, you saw a lot of these bags because the military was getting rid of them. They were 20 years old at that time. And at that time, the military issue in Vietnam was actually a poly bag. It had a different kind of liner in it. The advantage to these down bags is for their weight, they were incredibly warm. One of the big disadvantages though is the feathers would poke holes in the bag and you would lose filling. If it got wet, it was nearly useless. So it had to be kept dry, it had to be kept, you know, taken care of. Quite often they were only used in the field a month or two before you had to replace them, if that. And if you sweat in the bag, the bag got to stinking. If you were hot and you pulled it over you, if you put it on a wounded man running a fever, you know, whatever. If you got it soaked in blood, you threw it away. So you don't see many of these today that have survived in those days. Now it's the same configuration. This bag probably weighs, I'm guessing here guys, five pounds or less, four and a half. 
this was my first really good sleeping bag. When I say really good, relative. Now the U.S. issue at the time that this I picked up was the Vietnam was a good deal bigger, a good deal bulkier, and about the same weight. This one would pack down much smaller. So that's one of the reasons that I chose this piece of kit. Now this one is old, it is worn, it is stained, it is taped with duct tape because it's got so many holes in certain areas it's losing. But this is an old veteran I wanted to show you of my early bushcraft. Plus, these things are still out there, and maybe you've seen one and thought about it for a piece of vintage kit. So, let me show you. You open up the bag, just like a normal sleeping bag. And then you were supposed to take the bag and flip it. To get air back into those chambers where the feathers were. And I would sit here and do this for a minute or two before I lay down to pump air into the bag and thus puff up the loft. Now, I'll get you close and take show you the panel on it. There we go. Sleeping Bag Mountain M Model 1949. And there's all the other things. Feather filled, do not dry clean. And as you can see, it is a very stained up and used well loved. Now, were these good bags? Yes, as long as you took care of them. Here in my part of the south, they were very warm. The foot was very generous with the uh, feathers. So it kept your feet good and warm. The zipper works just like advertised. You pull it and it just unzips. It was long enough for me. I'm five foot ten, and I weigh just under 200 pounds, and I get in it quite comfortably. Now this is an old worn veteran. The new ones are a lot thicker than this because they haven't lost so much. But as far as for a piece of vintage kit to use on the trail, yeah, I'd still use this. Even though it's stained, even though it's dirty, even though it's been repaired a dozen times, it's still a proven piece of kit that I trust. So, if you're thinking about finding an old vintage type sleeping bag, something for a vintage kit, something like that, I would recommend the Model 1949 Mountain Bag. Be aware, don't get it wet, keep it clean, and any time a hole develops, patch it as quickly as possible or you're going to lose filler. Modern bags, modern down bags, are made out of better material and thus last longer, more durable. But if you're going for the vintage kit guy idea, this is the way to go. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft, saying safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.